hello guys and welcome back to the channel and this is the part two of the responsive multi-page website that we are creating and we are going to make sure we finish up everything in this video now in the previous video we were able to create everything on the desktop version okay so we were able to create the home page that is the desktop version of the home page all right so everything you see here that is what we created from the previous video now in this video we are going to proceed to creating the two other pages okay and that is the frequently asked questions page and then the let's talk page or the contacts page so that is what we are going to create in this video and also add some more functionalities to the website so some functionalities we are going to add is to be able to play our video which we are going to do even before we proceed to our media queries or making our websites responsive on tablets and then mobile phones all right so we are going to do that and then um okay so we have a testimonial section already done and then we are going to have our toggle okay so our frequently asked questions toggle we are going to add that functionality as well and more other functionalities that we are going to add okay so let's quickly move on and then finish up our project and at the end we are also going to deploy the website to hosting okay so that it can be accessible or we can share it to everyone that we want to all right so let's proceed all right so here in my html we are going to first start with playing our video okay so when we click this button we should be able to play our video okay of how this product works all right so i i could actually do this in the main.js but on the other pages that is the frequently asked questions page and then the let's talk page or the contacts page we are going to have a problem okay so i'm going to have a custom script here and we are first let's get our button okay from let me see let me see we give it an id all right so we give it an id of show commercial btn okay so that is this button and then let's get the model as well so this is the model for the video all right this is the model for the video and it is displayed none inside of our css let's see all right so we have it displayed now let me comment this out so that you can see the video so this is the video all right but we have it displayed none here in the css so what we want to do is when we click this then we want to show the video all right so let's go back to our html and our scripts so here let me leave a comment let me get the button okay so show commercial btn query selector all right so that is my button and i'm going to add an event listener okay so show commercial btn dot add event listener and there's going to be a click event and we are going to run this function okay this anonymous function right here all right so what we want to do is to let me first get the model as well okay the commercial model or the video model let me get that as well so const let me just call this commercial commercial query selector of commercial right for this commercial should be equal to grid okay so on click of this button we should see this commercial or the commercial video and the reason why it is not blocked is because by default we gave um when we were styling our model okay our commercial model or our video model we gave it give it an initial display of grid right here all right so that is what we are doing here as well all right so let's click and then see what happens and as you can see we have our video playing 
we can view in full screen we can even download if you want all right all right so the simplest way to close this video i'm thinking is to click outside of the video okay anywhere inside of the model to close it okay so that is what i'm thinking we should do so when we click anywhere outside the main video that is anywhere inside of the model then this video should be closed or should be hidden so let's go back to uh script here and let's see let me leave a comment close video so here let me get the body okay documents i'm going to put an event listener on the body dot body i'm going to add an event listener here and that is going to be a click event as well i like to use um, single quotes for this all right so we have an arrow function here let me actually put in an event all right so here we are going to say if the target of what we are clicking has an id of commercial okay has an id of commercial remember we gave our model an id of commercial right so if what we are clicking has an id of commercial then we want to display none on the commercial or on the model right okay we have a problem here and we should pass in our e okay that is our event our event should be here right this way our event should be all right so let's try that we we'll click inside the video and nothing happens but when we click outside of the video or anywhere in the model we should close our video or the model all right so that is how we can show or hide our video all right perfect now let's proceed to the media queries for the home page okay or actually for the whole website so we are going to create the media queries for tablets first and then we'll move on to so this is going to be for tablets and then after this we'll move on to the media queries for mobile phones all right so let's head on to the media queries all right so i'm first going to have different sizes for our h um our headings okay or our headers okay so the h1s to the h5 so i'm going to change the font sizes so the font size for h1 is going to be 4.4 rem i'm going to change the letter spacing for that as well that is going to be one pixel let's go on to our h2 the font size for that is going to be 2.7 rem and the letter spacing is going to be negative one pixel all right for the h3 the font size is going to be 2.2 rem and that is all the h4 is going to be font size of 1.2 rem and then the h5 the h5 is going to have a font size of 0 0.9 rem and then every paragraph tag every p is going to have a line height of 1.6 rem and then a font size of 0 0.9 rem okay that is for every paragraph and every container come on every container is going to have a width of the mobile width okay the mobile the variable mobile width that we have in the root that is 92 percent all right so that is the variable i explained css variables in the previous video that is the part one so you can go and check that out all right so that is for the container now every section is going to have an overflow x of hidden okay all right so that is our general styles for the tablets now let's move on to every section of the page and install them here in the tablet version 
let me actually leave the comment here all right so let's move on to the number let's start with the number let me see the breaking points or the break points all right so this is the break point for tablets okay so ipads and ipad pros and all that that is the break point i want us to see what is happening live so now our nav container is going to have a rate of 100 percent okay we want that to have a rate of 100 percent and then let's see i'm going to push the logo so margin left i'm going to give it a margin left of one rem let's move on to the ul okay so this on added list of the link items or the nav items i'm going to position them fixed okay we want them to be um we want them to be side by this time so i'm going to position them fixed from the top is going to be zero same for the left and then i'm going to change the flex direction to column let me give them a fixed width of 16 rem and height of 100 viewport height okay let me change the background as well to be that primary background so color primary and that is the orange background you see here all right let's move on and then let me give it a box shadow one rem for the x axis zero for the y axis two rem for the blur and then it's going to be an rgba of zero 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 point three for the alpha now i'm going to give it a z index z index of three okay so that it sits on top of everything on the page now the nav every nav item okay so nav container li I'm going to give them a height of 4.6 rem. I'm going to display flex. Then I'm going to align items to the center. Okay. All right. So we have some decent space between them. Now let's move on to every link or every anchor tag inside of it. Remember every or each one of these has an anchor tag. Okay. It's wrapped inside of an anchor tag. It's a link. All right so let's give them a width of 100 percent and then pardon let's give them pardon of zero for the top zero for the right one rem for the bottom and then two for the left all right so we have this um what else what else can i do here let's see now on hover so let me copy this when we hover over these links i want to give them a pattern left of three rem okay so that we have some shift or some movement so that looks good now let's move on and then you know what i'm going to change this height to four four rem okay four rem is good now let's move on to a uh, button okay so we should have a button here that that will show and then hide this okay so now button remember we displayed them none or we we hit them in the desktop version okay so here in the tablet version we are going to show them so we're going to display inline block on the button the cursor is going to be pointer background is going to be transparent okay we don't have we don't need a background for that and then let's change the color to black margin right is going to be around one rem so that it's not too far or too close to the edge of the browser and then let's see i'm going to change the font size it's too small so i'm going to change the font size to 1.6 rem all right so we have our two um we have our two buttons right there all right now we don't need the close button right away we don't need that right away so we are going to hide that as, as well and i think we give it a class of close btn okay so we give it a class of close btn i'm going to display that none all right so by default we have this um, menu button 
Um, let's see. Margin right. Why is it not? It should be pushed from that side. Let me do two rem. That is all for the nav section. Okay. Now let's move on to the head or the header section. That is the main area. Let's move on to that section. And for now, I'm going to display none on the sidebar. Okay. I'm going to display none for the, for now. I'm going to give it a top of seven rem and a height of a hundred percent okay so that is for our header this is our header right here now let's move on and then let's see the header container um let's see the great template columns for the container is going to be one fr one fr okay so we have three direct divs or three direct children inside of the container that is this section and then this image and then this details section right here but we are going to remove this details section that is why we have two frs here so one fr one fr All right so this section which is the info section is going to be one fr and then this image is also going to be one fr so let me save and we have this now this is floated down and that is no problem because we are going to display that none okay so let me first give it a gap of zero and then imagine top of zero as well. All right, so let's move on to, let's see, let me display none on the details. So header, container, details. I'm going to display none, all right? Perfect. Now let's see, all right, let's see. Now let's move on to the product section, okay? So let's move on to, let me just copy this comment i don't want us to waste too much time on this media query all right so let's move on to the products section so section products let me go straight to the container and i'm going to give it a width of the variable mobile width okay that is going to be for the container so you can see some change and that is all for our products section okay that is all for our products section very simple now let's move on to the frequently asked questions section okay let's move on to the frequently asked questions section this section right here looks good already so we are just going to go ahead and then um, our testimonial section also looks good so we are going to leave that and then move on to this frequently asked questions section right here so let me copy this comment and then leave it here so our frequently asked questions section let's style the h2 that is this right here so this h2 is going to have a margin bottom of three rem okay um let's see what else we can do the contents okay the contents every article here okay all of these are wrapped inside this contents div okay a div with a class of contents now we are going to set the great templates columns to one fr okay so that they are on top of each other okay perfect that is for the contents now let's see each article is going to have each one of these each one of these uh, frequently asked questions is inside an article tag so i'm going to change the pattern for that to 1.5 frame all right perfect so that is all for the frequently asked questions page now let's quickly move on to the cta section okay the call to action section the call to us action section that is going to be this and let's see what we can do here so section cta let me target the container directly i'm going to give it a pattern of four rem for the top and bottom and then two rem for the left and right okay 
so that is the pattern we have there um let's move on so section info let's see cta then the info that is this text the info div contains that text right there so i'm going to give that a width of 56 percent then i'm going to align self to flex that okay all right so we have that now let's target the I'm going to target the image this image right here is inside the div with a class of image so i'm going to position that absolute and then it's going to be 11 rems from the right okay um in our next project we are going to use bam okay so we we, we wouldn't have to be repeating ourselves or um be repeating the parents and all that before we can access our target element um let's see that is the cta section right now the button i want to style that button so i'm going to copy this and then target the btn every button has a class of btn okay so that button right there i want to give it a z index of one let me actually see how this looks on an actual tablet so i'm going to go to all right so this is how it looks on ipad pro this is how our website looks on ipad pro so everything looks pretty good everything looks good now i don't know whether we should touch our footer section i don't know if we should do that so let's see um i'm just going to leave it i'm just going to leave the footer section or oh, you let's display let's have the items let me let me see what i can do there so the footer section let me target the container directly so everything inside of the footer is wrapped inside of the div with a class of container so i'm just going to change the grid template columns we used a grid so i'm going to change the grid template columns to one fr one fr all right so we should have one two one two okay so that is good that looks good now let's move on to the mobile responsiveness okay the mobile media queries let's move on to that now here in the mobile version or the media queries for the mobile too we are going to change the h1s to h5s okay so the font size for those we are going to change now the h1 is going to have a font size of 3.4 rem um let's see no let me first at media screen and max width i'm going to do 600 pixels for the mobile version okay let me quickly find the breakpoint so body background red let me squeeze this browser to see the breakpoints for mobile um what did i do wrong here background red yo okay so we have our red background it's hard to see because of the orange background that we have so that is the breakpoints okay list our breakpoints right here so let's move let's move on let me actually expand our editor okay vs code so we are going to move on to the h ones okay so the font size for the h1 is going to be 3.4 3 rem the h2 is going to have a font size of 2.4 rem the h3 
is going to have a font size of 1.6 rem okay um let's see our h4 is going to have a font size of 0 0.96 rem i don't know why i should be doing all this but let's just proceed font size for our h5 is going to be 0 0.7 rem and then our paragraph okay our p is going to have a font size of 0 0.84 rem and a line height i think we, we give it a line height of 1.6 already okay that should be good that should be all right for the mobile version as well but i want every section to have a pattern top of 8 rem okay now let's move on to the different sections that we have on the page now the nav bar let's move on to the nav bar come on nav bar now the nav bar let me target the icons okay the icons i'm going to reduce the gap between them i'm going to make that one rem is two rem okay i remember we gave it two rem gap but I'm going to make it one rem, and as you can see, they are closer to each other. Now, let me copy this comment, quickly change that to the header. That's the main section or the hero section. Um, the header is going to let me target the container. The great templates columns for this is going to be one FR. Okay, so let me go up. So I want I want this to be at the top and then this to be at the bottom okay so let me first change it to one fr first um let's see great templates columns for container all right so now our image is at the bottom but i don't want that so let me target the image um let's see even before we do that let me first target the paragraph okay so the info p i'm going to give that a font size of one rem make them smaller the flex direction is going to be column these are the cta or the call to action buttons and i'm going to give them a margin top of 1.4 rem okay Now from there, I want to bring this image to the top, okay, and this info down. So let me go to the header, container image. It's inside a div with a class of image. So I'm going to change the grid row to one, okay. I want to bring that to the top, and then the width is going to be 60 viewport width, and the margin is going to be zero auto yo what's wrong container image okay it's actually header image okay i think we gave it a class of header image yes we gave it a class of header image so let me change this to header image all right so we bring that to the, the top and then let's see what we can do here let me text align everything to the center i don't think i need this as well that is the this delivery i don't think we need that so i'm going to remove that as well let me put that here so header we give that a class of delivery okay and I'm going to display none on that. All right, so seems like we have a beautiful header done. So the commercial is going to be the modal video that plays. It's going to be this, okay? This video right here. So section with the ID of commercial. I'm going to directly grab the container and then change the width to the mobile width 
now that's all for the products section let's quickly move on to let's quickly move on to the products section change the comment to products so this section let me give it a margin top of forum products and then let me target the articles okay each of these products or each of the products has an article um tag or is wrapped inside an article tag so we are going to change the grid template columns to one fr okay all right so we have that and then i'm going to text align to the center and give them a gap of 1.4 rem all right so that is what we have let me give them a margin one rem and then zero and then i'm going to target the images okay so each of these images that is this first one and then the second one is wrapped inside a div with a class of image and they are going to have a width of a hundred percent and a pattern left of five frame okay all right so that is how they look all right so it seems our products section looks good now let's proceed to that is why choose us let me straight let me target the container head right okay i'm going to display none i don't need that that is this section right here okay i'm going to display none and then let's let's um get to the article okay let's target the article the article for that i'm going to change the grade templates columns to one fr and then let's see i'm going to give that a gap of one rem and text align everything to the center okay perfect so that is all for that section as well now let's move on to this trusted client section okay i'm not going to need that on the mobile phone on the mobile devices so i'm going to display none on that quickly so that is wow trusted clients right let me select that section with the id of trusted clients i'm going to quickly display none perfect now we are at the testimonial section okay so and here in our testimonial section we are directly going to grab our individual testimonials okay so uh, if you can remember each testimonial has a class of slide okay swiper slide actually swiper slide okay so here we are going to change the flex direction to column okay all right so that is what we have and then i'm going to reduce the gap to two rem all right so that is all we have to do for our testimonial section to look to look good on mobile devices if you want you can change the image size okay you can change the size of the image but i'm going to leave it like that and let's see what we can do so that is actually all for the testimonial section we are going to move on to let's see our frequently asked questions section looks good so let's move to this section right here that is the cta section cta or the call to action section section with a class of cta or sorry the id of cta i'm going to directly grab the container and change the flex direction to column the height is going to be fit content and the padding give it a padding of two rem okay section cta container 
now the info or the um the text section okay so that is inside the class of info i'm going to give that a width of 100 percent and then let's see what else can we do here let me grab the h3 the h3 is going to have a font size of 2.3 rem make that a little larger and then the p is going to have a font size of 1 rem perfect now let's move on to the image i'm going to position that relative you can see that changes everything and from the top is going to be 2 rem then from the right 30 percent so that is how our cta section is going to look now let's move on to the footer section quickly let's move on to the footer section So the container, I'm going to change the grid template columns here to one FR, okay? Let me give the gap of three rem and text align everything to the center. I want to start the logo. I want to bring it to the middle. So it's inside the div with a class of logo. I'm going to give it a margin zero auto to bring it to the middle everything here in the footer section looks good okay except uh socials okay so let me target that and that is inside a david a class of socials i want to target each icon and then change the font size first let me target the socials okay i'm going to justify content to be center okay to bring it to the middle or to center that I'm going to increase the icons okay so socials I I'm going to change the font size of that to 1.5 so they are a little larger all right so that is all for the media queries okay that is all for the media queries for tablets and then mobile devices now I want to add the functionalities next okay so next we are going to be able to click this to show our sidebar and also here in the frequently asked questions section here we want to be able to toggle the answers for the various questions that we have all right so that is what we are going to do next so let's head to our main.js and do that and after this we'll move on to create our two other pages okay so let's do our functionalities real quick and then we'll move on to create our two other pages. Now we want to be able to click this menu icon and then show our sidebar, okay, or our side menu. Let me say open and close nav menu or sidebar or whatever it is. Now I'm going to grab this. That is the menu button, the sidebar, and then the close icon as well or the close button as well. So let me see, let me grab the menu VTN. That is the name I'm going to give it. And that has an ID of menu, okay, menu BTN. So that is menu BTN, okay. That is the ID I gave it inside of the HTML. Let me actually duplicate this twice. The next one is going to be the close button and we give that an ID of close BTN as well. And then lastly, we are going to grab, we are going to grab our sidebar. Okay. Or our menu. And that is inside of nav container UL. That is the UL inside of, inside of the nav bar. I'm going to call this menu. Okay. So when I click this, let me actually go to the home. When I click this, I want to show the sidebar, hide this icon, and then show the close icon so that we can be able to close the menu. So, so let me add an event listener on that. So menu btn dot add event listener, and this is going to be a click event. And as I said, when I click this, I want to show the menu. Okay, so I'm going to take that and then the style display. 
to let's display block okay so when i click the menu button we should get our sidebar right here okay so we have our sidebar uh let's see let me go back and then increase this height to 4.6 okay now we want to be able to close it okay we want to be able to close our sidebar so the trick that i'm going to use here is to hide our menu button and then show our close button instead so our menu button here i'm going to change the display to none okay i want our menu button to be hidden so that it we can have space to show our close button okay so when i click i'm going to hide our menu button and then show our close button okay so let me change the style display of this close button to be inline inline block all right so let's try that or replaced it should be replaced with the close button so when i click it is replaced with the close button we have our sidebar as well let's move on to cl actually closing the sidebar okay let's move on to actually closing it so so for that i'm going to add an event listener just like this let me actually duplicate this let me remove this right here and then let's change this comment to close so i'm going to add an event listener let me duplicate this so on the close btn so here i add an event listener on the close button and when we click on that close button i want the sidebar to be displayed none okay the close button i want that to be displayed none as well and then this should be the menu button okay so i want to show the menu button again okay so when i click the close button this should happen let me click we have our close button we have our sidebar as well but when i click the close button we get back let's see menu menu this should be menu okay we have our sidebar our close button when i click again we have our menu button and then our sidebar is gone okay so we have that functionality done perfect on large screens okay when i click this i want to have this underline okay and that is the active class we have um on the home section or on the home nav item okay it is active by default okay so when i click any of these let's say the product section or this i should have that underline so here that is what we are going to do next so i'm going to grab all the nav items okay so let me put that here let me say nav items which is going to be documents the query selector or and they are inside nav ul i'm grabbing all the li's okay and right here i'm going to say add active class to now collect nav item okay so i'm going to loop through all the nav items here um for each item you're going to use a for each loop here I'm going to get the link inside of it okay so the anchor tag that is going to be the current item and i'm going to use query selector to grab it and here all i'm going to do is to add an event listener on this and run this function okay so when i click i want to add that active class all right so let's try when i click this i have the active class but notice the other items still have the active class okay so we have to remove the active class from the other items okay so here and that is going to run this function that is going to be this function here let me loop through the nav items here too i'm going to grab all the anchor tags and i'm going to remove the active class from them okay and that is all i'm going to do here so even before i add the active class here 
I have to remove from all the other nav items okay so that is all we have to do to achieve that now let's try we click on products it brings us to the products section and then we have the active class on the products okay we come to the why choose that section and we have that active class as well all right so that is that now let's move on to the frequently asked questions toggle okay we should be able to toggle the questions here in the frequently asked questions section so let's move on to that now for this i'm going to grab all the frequently asked questions okay so let me quickly show you the frequently asked questions all right so they are inside a section with an id of facts okay or the frequently asked questions okay and each frequently asked question is inside an article tag so that is what we are going to grab so here i'm going to say const facts or frequently asked questions should be equal to document or query selector or and we are going to grab the section with a um, id of facts and then we are grabbing the articles okay all the article elements inside of it now here we are going to loop through them okay so using for each loop we are going to loop through them and for each frequently asked question we are going to run this function okay so first we want to add an event listener which is a click event and we are going to run this function so the first thing we are going to do is notice this first one has a class of active let me show you uh, let's see this first article has or this first frequently asked question has a class of active oh, sorry open that is why it's styled like this okay that is why the question is showing and then this icon is different okay so so let's see here we are going to toggle that class okay that open class so that is the class we want to toggle let's try that and we have it okay we have it now what i want to do is to change the icon okay so when i click this i want to change the icon so let's see so i want to change the icon when we click on it so let me grab the icon inside of it so, okay so let me show you okay so we have a day with a class of icon but we are grabbing the eye okay and we are using icon scouts and they use the classes okay they use class to change their icons so here we are going to say if the icon that we are grabbing has a class name of ui l ui l plus okay that is what all these icons have so notice they have this first one has the minus because it has this open class but the rest has this okay which we are using to check all right so if they have that class then we want to change that to the minus okay so if we click on it and they are not already open then we want to change that then we want to change that to the minus so the icon class name should now be minus okay they should now be minus else we want to change that to the plus okay so if the frequently asked question is already open then when we click back on it then it should change the icon i hope this makes sense so let's just try this all right so that is how it works so we have our frequently asked questions right here okay perfect now the last thing that i want to do is the um, um the navbar background okay when we scroll we want to have that orange background for the navbar so down here
I'm going to add an event listener on the window, okay? And that is going to be a scroll event. And I'm going to run this function. So I'm going to get the nav bar and the class list. I'm going to toggle a class here. Let me call that window scroll. And when we scroll on the y axis, okay? When we scroll on the y axis, and the scroll is greater than zero, then I want to have that style. So let me go to my CSS. Um, let's see, let me go back up to the nav section. I want this class, which is this. I want this class to be right here. Um, so for this, I want to have the background color primary okay so when i scroll you see we have that background okay and by default um we have this box shadow which i don't want i want it to be when we scroll okay so you see by default we don't have that box shadow but when i scroll you can see now we have that box shadow okay and i think that is all for this functionalities okay that is all for the functionalities that we have to add now let's move on to create the two other pages that is the frequently asked questions page and then the contacts page let's quickly do that and get done with this project let's start with our contact page so contact html let's go to our contact page and there is nothing there but we should have our number okay our number and then our footer should be on both our contact page and then the frequently asked questions page so here i'm going to copy the number and then actually let me copy from the head okay let, let me copy to the head so i'm going to copy all that and then paste it in here and here let's see what do i not need here i don't need this swiper js so i'm just going to remove it you can leave it if you want but i don't need that so let me just remove that all right so let me refresh the page and we have our navbar okay we should have our footer as well so i'm going to go back to the index and then grab the footer section so the footer section And then paste it inside of here all right so we have our nav and then the footer section perfect so our contact is going to be inside a section with an id of contact okay and let's wrap everything inside a container and here we are going to have an aside that is going to hold some information or address and all that and then lastly we are going to have our form okay let's remove the action for now we are going to add that at the end after after silent our form all right so we have these two okay so let me first actually you know what let me this aside is just going to be some information like our address and all that our email and all that stuff so let me just copy and then paste that in here so i'm just going to paste that okay so this is what we have now let's move to the form okay so this is going to be our contact form so our first input here is going to be a text input okay that is going to be the name so let's give that a name of name okay and this is going to be necessary because when receiving the message okay when receiving the form we want to be able to know the field that the message is coming from okay so that is why we need the name now i'm going to have a placeholder here as well the placeholder i'm going to say your name and then this should be required okay for some font and validation so that is the first input or the first the first field 
the next one is going to be an email okay so the type is going to be email and the name is going to be email address and then a placeholder and this should also be required okay um let's see the next is going to be number telephone number you can structure this to meet your website form requirements so there's going to be number and then the name is going to be phone number okay the placeholder is going to be phone number as well and then this should be required as well okay this should also be required the next is going to be the message so we are going to put this inside the text area the name is going to be message the id and columns i'm going to remove all, all all of that so but we are going to have a placeholder okay of message and this should also be required all right now the last thing we are going to have is a, is a submit button so uh, that is the last thing we are going to have and it is going to say send okay nice okay so this is our form right here this is our form now let's head to our css and give this some styling actually you know what we have a separate css for our contacts okay so although we although we are going to inherit some of the styles from the index or the style css we are going to have a separate style just for our contact form as well so let me go back to our contacts here and then link that new style sheet okay so here let me duplicate this and there's going to be contact.css and make sure that comes after the styles okay after the styles or the main css after the styles of css so let's head to the style contact css and give this some styling onto display grid and then the grid template columns is going to be 20 rems for the aside or the left side and then auto for the form okay so they are side by side there now i want to give them a gap of five frame let me actually shrink this all right let's move on now let me move let's style the aside okay so section contacts and then the aside i want to give that a background of the primary background so color primary and then give that a pattern of 2 rem font size 0 0.9 rem and then a color i'm going to change the color to color light okay all right so we have that i'm going to target the h4 give that a color black font size of 1.8 rem a margin bottom of 0 0.5 rem and the font weight of 600 okay so that is our h4 right there now i want to style i want to target each article okay each of these is inside an article tag so i want to target that um i'm going to display flex and then give that a gap so the, the gap is going to be in between the icon and then the info okay the information here and i'm going to give a margin top of two rem all right so we have this let me head straight to style the let me increase the font sizes of the icons okay so i'm going to change let me first change the color to color white and then the font size 1.2 rem now the h 5s okay let me style that h5 change the font weight to 600 
then let me change the color as well okay so color color white all right so that is what we have for the aside now let's style the form okay let's style the form itself so section contact and then the form i'm going to display flex flex direction i want it to be column and then i'm going to give a gap between them of one rem now i'm going to target the inputs okay the inputs that we have inside of the form um let me let me target the text area as well okay so uh, let me just copy this that is the only text area we have but i just want to be specific i'm going to give that a pattern of 1.4 rem and a background of the color primary okay okay so we have the text area okay now the text area is i think it should have enough space okay so i'm going to give that a height of one let me do 10 rem and that is enough space now i'm going to grab the placeholders for the inputs okay so each input has a placeholder the text area has a placeholder as well that is the message So every placeholder is going to have that color light. Now on focus, let me copy all these again. On focus, and that means when we click inside of any of these inputs on focus, I want to have a different style for the background. So on focus, I want the background to be color black and then the text to be color white now the last thing i want to do here is the button the last thing i want to start with the, is the button so section contact then i want to target the button let me give that a fixed width of eight rem and let's see let me actually go back here i'm going to give this a btn class okay so that it has that default button style that we had in the previous video okay we styled this in the previous video so we just give it that btn class and then we have this style now i want this to look good on mobile okay so here in the media queries let's get to the mobile to see how it will look at media screen i'm going to do it on mobile of course if you want you can go ahead and then do it for the tablets so here i'm just going to target the container and then change the grid template column to one fr okay let me change the gap to two rem and that is our beautiful contact form right there wait when i scroll i should have that i think we have a problem let me check here i think our javascript is not working properly in this section so let me go back to the contact form go down i didn't even have my body oh god so before the body i'm going to paste our script and we should have our html as well okay our end it uh yo what's wrong swipe okay so here we have a problem with the swiper js 10 so let me just i could just remove the swipe let me go to main js and then i could just 
remember we are only using the swiper js on our testimonial section okay and that testimonial section is only inside our index html so here i'm going to paste that swiper js code right here inside of the html okay inside of the index html and that should solve the problem i think okay so everything is working fine now now when i click i should go to um let's see let's fix more bugs so here in the contact html okay this should take me to the home this should take me to index HTML hashtag products okay the same here um this should take me to the frequently asked questions this should take me to yep that is all all right so that's all we need for our contact section okay now i'm going to copy let's see let's see what we have in the frequently asked questions page now let me go to the contact section or the contact page sorry and then i'm going to copy the from the footer section and i'm going to paste that down here now let me go back and then copy the head okay let me copy from the doc type to the nav and i'm going to paste that as well at the top and we are going to have our frequently uh, questions here okay but first let's go back to the contact page and then add the form submission okay we should be able to submit or receive we should be able to receive any message from this form inside our email so that is what we are going to do next before we proceed to the frequently asked questions page so to be able to receive messages from this form we are going to use a service called form spree and we are going to this is their website okay so formspree.io we are going to get started okay we are going to click on get started and then here we are going to fill this form so and i've been registered here i already have an account so right here i'm going to create a new form okay so let me create this new form here for the form name and then the project name is going to be multi page website okay all right so i'm going to create form after creating your account here you'll be sent an activation link to activate your account okay so after verifying your account then you come back to the website here and then copy this link okay yours will be different so you just copy this go back to your website code that is your form so here we are in the form html and here in the form the action for this form is going to be the link we just copied okay it's going to be this and make sure the method is post okay and this is the only two things that you have to add to your form for you to be able to receive messages after verifying your email these are the only two things that you need all right so quickly let me show you so this the email that i used okay these are all some previous projects that i worked on so let me, let's first try that out so here let me enter a name so that is the name let me enter an email that is the email so that is the phone number and let me just grab a dummy text um, let me see let me just grab some dummy text copy and then paste it inside as my message now i'm going to send and our form has been submitted okay so let's check our email and here you can see we have 
of our email here okay so this is the name we entered this is the email we entered this is the phone number i entered it and this is the message i copied from the google page all right let's go back one thing i want to show you if you want to prevent spam okay you have to enable this google recapture so let's enable it and then let's try that again so here i'm going to submit and i'll have to pass this google recap so let's select the traffic all right so the same message but we will have to pass that google recapture to prevent spam all right so that is all for this contact section or this contact page now let's move on to the last page and that is going to be the frequently asked questions page now the frequently asked questions section is going to be very simple i think the best way is to have a separate page but for now we just want to do everything really quick okay so if you have that array of objects you would have to loop through them and then show or to display the various questions and then their answers on your web page right but here we are just hard coding them inside of our html so here i just copied the frequently asked questions section of the home page that is the index html and i pasted it inside the frequently asked questions page so that is going to be the same style the same everything okay so this is the frequently asked questions page you see we have the functionality as well so everything looks pretty good even on mobile it still looks great okay so the only thing i'm going to do here is to duplicate the questions okay so here let me just duplicate this a few times as i said the best way is to have a separate page containing the questions and then the various answers okay and then you use maybe a for each loop or any loop to loop through them and then show them on your web page okay but for now let's just do let's just hard code them okay so these are the questions we have all right now i want this button to take us to the contact page okay so maybe if someone has a different question that is not of, of um found here on the frequently asked questions page they can directly contact us through this button here so let me go down and this is going to take us to the contact html and it should say okay that sh that should be enough okay so contact us so this will take us to the contact page all right so we have all our pages okay we have our home page we have everything is work everything is working great okay this will take us to our contact page we can actually send messages from our contact form we have our frequently asked questions you know what this frequently asked questions page should have the active class okay so let's come here this active class shouldn't be on the home it should be on the frequently asked questions page because that is the page we are on and i think our contact page let's see okay so our contact page should have the active class as well so let me remove this and then put it on the contact page right here all right so our contact page has the active class and if you don't want any of these to be open by default you can just go to the markup like here in the frequently asked section then you can remove okay you can remove the open class so none will be open by default okay all 
all right so that is all for our project now let's move on to deploying it okay let's move on to make our website live so that it can be accessible to everyone on the internet all right so let's move on to that now to upload our website we are going to create a zip file from all these files okay from our main project folder so here i'm going to copy these then create a new folder let me call this and i'm going to paste all those files inside of it okay so i'm going to right click on this new folder we just created and then i'm going to compress okay i'm going to zip that folder all right so this is what we are going to upload to our server okay so let me delete this folder this is what we are going to upload so let's go back to our h panel our hosting h panel and let's locate our file manager and let's locate our domain name which is egate.tutorials that's what we are going to upload that is why we are going to upload our files okay let's enter into our public html now i have some files here already i'm just going to delete them okay and i'm going to upload our file okay our zip file and upload okay so i'm going to extract our file now this zip is not needed so i'm going to delete that and here i'm going to move all these files to my main or my public html okay so this is my main project folder that i'm going to move these projects to okay so let me move those let me actually go here and then choose the public html okay i'm going to move all these files to the public html so let's go to our public html and delete our folder okay so this folder let's just delete that and now we should have our website files okay so our public html should look just like how our project looked before okay so we can once again delete this zip file okay so our public html in our, on our server should look just like this now we can visit our website and see how our website looks okay so this is the website we just created and this is how it looks online okay this is our live website now you can go ahead and activate your all right now you can go ahead and activate your ssl which is very easy to do so that is all for the projects okay that is all for our projects and our website is live we can still send message from here people can send us message from this form and all that so that is all thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one